So thank you everyone for um, joining us today. Um, we have a special guest with us, um, James Parker, and we really um, wanted to uh, have this opportunity, Cass, Cassandra Scott and I wanted to have this opportunity um, to talk with James Parker, who is the new Australian General Manager at DEX, which is formerly um, Receipt Bank. Um, both Cassandra and I um, and many of the people joining us have uh, used um, DEX, formerly known as Receipt Bank, for an extremely long time and it was a great opportunity to meet James and hear from him uh, what is happening um, at DEX and, and what we need to know. Um, many of us who are joining know that there has been some recent announcements which surprised us um, and, and recent changes that have surprised us and uh, we're sort of getting to know what's going on um, and, and the vision the why, the where, and what's going to happen, what the future is. So before I hand over to James, I'd just like to hand over to my co-host to just briefly introduce herself as she can, and then we'll hand over to James. Hi, everyone. Again, as Heather said, thanks for joining us today. Um, most of you actually know me as uh, a Zero Partner and also uh, Administrator of Bookkeepers in Practice Australia Facebook Forum, um, or from other various forums on Facebook. So Thanks for taking the time out of your day and um, hopefully we'll have a great chat with James, learn a little bit more about Dext and also delve a little bit more into the partner relationship between um, Dext and the, the bookkeeping accounting community here in Australia as well. So thank you very much. Thank you um, so much, Cassandra. And um, I think as um, you may have realised, please put any questions you have into the Q&A area at the moment. Um, but I would like to hand over to Dext at... <laughs> James, I'm still in the world of Dynasty where there was Dex Dexter running around. You're probably all too young to, to know about Dex Dexter. <laughs> so, but James, thank you so much for joining us. Really looking forward to um, hearing from you today. No, thank you very much for having me and I really appreciate this opportunity to, to talk into uh, a, lot, a lot of people in, uh, in a short amount of time but uh, hopefully I can give you some information around uh, the, the, the why and the where and, and what we're trying to achieve going forward. Um, so uh, I guess uh, look uh, most people know that the history uh, or know some of the history around uh, who we are and, and where we've been but um, previously known as Receipt Bank, as, as most people already know, um, formed in 2010 in the UK um, and came out to Australia around about 2014. So um, in that region about seven years ago. So I guess long checkered history in releasing the product called Receipt Bank into multiple regions. Um, so currently in Canada, in the USA, in France, in the UK, uh, South Africa, and obviously within uh, the APAC region in uh, Singapore. We've got a couple of clients in Hong Kong uh, and New Zealand and Australia. So uh, quite a geographical uh, space that we, we cover with, 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 with our products. And I guess where we were going as a, as a product with, as a single product was, um, it was a slow burn, if I was going to say, as a business. We were uh, launched into those regions, um, had great takeoff in regards to uh, partners coming on board and, and adoption, but then looking to slow down probably three to four years after being adopted into those markets. And it soon became evident that uh, bookkeepers and accountants were looking for additional uh, products or services being offered um, within the, the sort of the, the, the tech stack as such. Um, so as a business, Receipt Bank looked at what they thought would be the direction and the future of where bookkeeping and accounting were going to be and identified a few opportunities. And um, in sort of, I guess, early 2020, uh, to mid 2020, um, we acquired a, a product called Xavier. Um, so that was a product that was out of the UK uh, that was bought into the Australian market around the sort of September, October uh, time uh, last year. Uh, now Xavier is, is very much around looking at the data rather than the inception of the data, which was what Receipt Bank was, uh, was doing. 
And it soon became very uh, apparent to us that it was getting confusing in the market that we had um, receipt bank by receipt bank. And then we had Xavier by receipt bank. And when we were talking to uh, various prospects and, and opportunities, um, it, it became very uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, obvious to us that we were confusing the names together by having, um, you know, Xavier by Receipt Bank. They were saying, oh, okay, so this is all about capture, capturing invoices and expenses. And we were like, well, no, that's what Receipt Bank does. And so it got a bit confusing. So um, as a business, we're also looking to uh, bring on new products into our suite. So the powers that be, the, the, the brains, um, looked at what was going to be the best way that we could deliver multiple services and products um, and we came up with a platform. So we looked at whether we would re, you know, retain the name Receipt Bank or whether we would look to take the opportunity for us as a business to relaunch us as a platform, bringing in multiple products and services into that single platform. So um, we looked around, we obviously engaged with various marketing agencies um, and we came up with uh, Dext. Um, so Dext is a, a play on two words, really around the dexterity that accounting and bookkeepers bring to, to businesses and, you know, to, to, you know, um, to look after the range of business problems that uh, some small, medium businesses have that accounts and bookkeepers uh, deal with. And then it's around the next generation, around where we believe the accounting and bookkeeping services uh, need to be in, in three to five years' time. So that's where it came around. Um, I know there's a lot of there's been a lot of chatter in various groups around text drunken about uh, 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 dumping via text or uh, other things. But I think, look, you know, if if we took what the Urban Dictionary said about uh, uh, names and uh, 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 companies, then I think we'd all be in a world of trouble. I think. If I look at accountants, uh, if I look at accountants, I think that's, uh, I think if on the Urban Dictionary, the number two reason for an accountant is a, a porn star. So, uh, and for a bookkeeper, it's uh, a, an alcoholic drink of tequila and Red Bull. So, uh, you know, we, we have, you have to take the Urban Dictionary with a pinch of salt. Uh, and that's not something that we necessarily really want to get in, uh, in, involved in, uh, really. Dext is really that dexterity and next generation. So, so the Dex platform is about bringing um, those two products that we have within our market here in, in the APAC region together into a seamless platform. So you can see your, your clients and small, medium businesses within that platform, how they're performing from a, a, a prepare perspective, which is the old receipt bank, and from a precision perspective, which is the Xavier product. And uh, in the well, sort of near future, we'll also be looking to uh, launch uh, a couple of new products that will also be embedded into, uh, into that platform as well. So I guess the, the, the why was really around, we needed to make sure that we had a clear identity for our platform and that we were, we were able to bring in new applications that delivered uh, different capabilities into that platform in a seamless integrated manner. So um, that's what we've um, uh, sort of um, come up with in regards to Dext, and that's where we're looking to go. The, the where where we're going at the moment is that we're, we're currently looking at various opportunities in regards to what we think bookkeeping accountants want. Um, we have a various range of, of feedback um, channels that we're looking to implement within our uh, our business. We're currently um, uh, in a beta program at the moment with about 240 partners. Uh, so they're a mixture of bookkeepers and partners across the, the business where we have the ability for them to give us what we call voice of the customer. So um, we have a product that we're implementing at the moment where People can feedback their ideas, their features or products that they would like to see uh, supplied. And we will you know, make that available for other partners to also see as well so that they can vote on it, so that they can actually have 
uh, uh, an area where they can see all of the various suggestions and then being able to put their vote against those to say, yeah, that's a great idea. That is something I'd like to see. And what that allows us to do is, is sort of prioritise where we spend our time uh, and development uh, and, and you know, dollars, I guess, to a certain extent in regards to investing uh, in to supply those features and, and solutions. So we're starting to roll that out. It's in a beta program right now. We're also looking to start uh, some um, advisory panels within our business. Um, we've had the old certificate uh, certification process within the business where you can be a, cert a certified um, partner with Index. But what we're trying to do now is move that into uh, a, a new program, which is around advisory. So you can become an ADEX advisor. And as part of that program, there will be um, a, a raft of benefits that will benefit uh, the, the partner program. So there are things like um, we'll help with SEO uh, for websites for um, the partner. We'll invest in um, uh, logos and um, uh, collateral and marketing material, self-promotions. There will be um, a level of, um, you know, case studies and webinars like uh, and chats like this that we will do with those advisor programs as well. So um, we're investing about, uh, I think the, the last number was about 1.5 million pounds, which is probably around about two and a half million to three million dollars into that program where we're hoping to take on probably in the first phase by, by the end of this year, around about two to 300 partners globally into that program. I guess it's, it's a bit like the, I guess, the chairman's lounge or the chairman's club for, for Qantas. Uh, it's very much around, there's some criteria that needs, needs to be met, but there's also some wins on that, is that we want advisors that are in there that um, give us, cap give, give us uh, uh, ability to uh, work with people that are using our products in a way that maximises the benefit for their end clients as well and that we um, sort of um, make them uh, as, as powerful in the, in the community as well so that they're seen as a, a go-to in regards to advisory services. So the, 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 the why is the name of the, cha the cha name change, sorry, uh, the where is where we're going is to really move up in regards to where we see the accounting and bookkeeping services move to. So um, it's very much into more into that advisory side of, of, of small, medium businesses. I think, you know, you guys deal with the small, medium businesses all the time. And there's, there's things that um, challenges that are thrown up all the time, whether it be, you know, suddenly the job keeper that came in last year that's now starting to, you know, being phased out. Um, you know, there's the, um, the, the small, medium businesses grants that now suddenly become available. So there's all of these new, um, I guess, changes that happen within the market that we will try and help uh, and develop into our business suite so that we can help support those in a, in a better manner. But also look to, to, to the future of where things are gonna move by getting involved with you know, certain sort of government panels and advisory boards uh, so that we can try and understand what's coming down the line. You know, the, the, the recent announcement in the recent budget of a few hundred million dollars to make things digital. You know, what does that actually mean? What is the, what is the, um, what is the impact going to be to potentially people like bookkeepers or accountants or even to the small, medium businesses? So that's where we really want to move into that advisory side of, of the business for yourselves, um, but also be as a trusted advisor in the marketplace so that we've got our finger on the pulse, we've got a view of what's happening and what's coming down the line. We're working with the accounting solutions, the, the you know, the zeros, the MYOBs, the, the, the intuits of this world uh, as a, as, as a, a you know, uh, small example, but also the other uh, technology stacks that are out there as well. So who we integrate with, who do, who do we look to need to, um, to, to be aware of as well as, as, as other products come into the market that might also be um, you know, disruptive so that we can you know, work with them as well. So it's very much around moving with the times, 
taken on the voice of the customer. That's where we're going is, is getting more involved uh, from that uh, perspective. So the voice of the customer is going to be embedded into the product. Then we're going to have various panels and sort of user groups within the region, which we will have the opportunity to take feedback for. And then really get involved in those sort of, you know, uh, panels and agencies that are, are dealing with the future needs and helping to feed that back into accounts and bookkeepers and helping advise where we think the services are going to need to be supplied to those end clients that you that you service. So that's where we want to be is, is more of that trusted advisor to the accountants and bookkeepers. That's our business. Our, our business is to make the accountants and the bookkeepers the heroes. That's what we want to achieve. Um, and look, I, 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 I can you know hear a lot of frustrations in the market at the moment from us as a business. We've gone through some rapid changes. Um, We've, we've grown up as a business. We've had to take on some uh, significant uh, capital raising uh, events over the years. So I think there was a, a 35 million raise in 2017. There was a $55 million a pound raise uh, in, 20, in the tail end of 19, beginning of 2020. And more recently, this this year, we've recently had a, a bit of a buyout in regards to um, HG Capital coming into the business. So um, that recently, that's a recent transaction that happened, um, as I say, in uh, probably around about uh, May, uh, April, May this year. Um, so they have bought out some of the, the previous shareholders. Uh, the investor, investor uh, groups that were in the business, and they now have a majority shareholding within our within our business. So, HG Capital, uh, they're a UK business. Um, they are one of the largest venture capitalists or uh, equity um, uh, uh, companies in the UK that uh, that invest into technology solutions. So, some of their uh, suite of, of um, companies that they already own are in the accounting space. So for an example, they own Iris, which is one of the largest accounting software practice management solutions in the UK. Um, they've got another company called Visma, which is very much in the Scandinavian company uh, countries that uh, look into accounting services. Um, they've also got Access Group, um, which uh, some of you may be aware of. That we've just completed the acquisition for the Sage APAC region that completed on the 1st of June. So you can see that they're very much invested in the accounting and bookkeeping area. Um, and they see Dext as a great uh, product and, and business that will complement and augment the capabilities that are with those uh, those other companies that they have within the portfolio. So um, we're really looking forward to it because I think it will uh, it will allow us to to have a greater reach, but uh, also provide a greater services to the uh, to the to the community. James, thank you. That's been um, there's been a great deal of information shared there. So thank you very much. Um, probably one of the first things I'd like to do is, is thank you for the language of inclusivity. Um, one of the big challenges that we've certainly had in the Australian market, and particularly with uh, the rebranding from Receipt Bank to Dext, was that there seemed to be, uh, and I understand that, you know, all of this is coming out of Europe and the UK, so it's a very, very different operating environment. But here, uh, bookkeepers are actually one of the major channels to market for your, your product, so the interface between Dext and the, and the consumer or the, the business that's utilising it. And uh, we were very, very much as bookkeepers um, left out of a lot of the collateral. So I do thank you very much for um, recognising that. And there's a lot more inclusivity in the language that's being used. So thank you. Um, the other thing that I'd, I'd like to pick up on that too, and it was actually quite funny when the Dex branding came out and everybody was up in arms and, you know, the name change and, and why, why weren't weren't we told? And I think that the biggest um, challenge a, a lot of the Australian uh, user community, so or partner community found was one minute it was there and the next minute, or well, one minute it wasn't, and the next minute it was. So we didn't actually have an opportunity to run interference between our clients and ended up with a lot of flack. Um, I'd hope that goes down to a lesson learned for Dext so that in future, and any other software companies in fact, 
please just give us a little bit of notice so that we've at least got an awareness of what's happening and we can run yes. interference with our clients a wee bit. But there was a funny meme that came out at that stage and uh, it's the character Dexter that, you know, kills bodies everywhere and, and all of that. And it was actually Dex uh, <laughs> kills paperwork. And when it came out, I, I, I initially saw it in the context. It was a bit funny around the whole Dex rebranding. But in looking at it again a couple of days ago, it clicked. And that's actually what Dex is doing. It is killing paperwork. So I can probably introduce you to the guy that actually did the meme and you might be able to make some money out of it. But I think it's actually important <laughs> in the advisory work that we as bookkeepers and accountants are doing with our clients that it is very, very much about a you know, a paperless society. So there's just a little thing there. Um, one of the comments I'd like to pick up, if I can, and that's um, around your the beatering and the advisory panels. And I'm just wondering how much of the focus of that is Australian-based. Because one of the senses that we've probably got out of DEX, so certainly I have over the last uh, maybe two to three months, is it's becoming far more UK-centric, more so than Australian-centric. Um, and again, I think, you know, if we look back at the rebranding and, and bookkeepers we've gotten, the, the UK marketplace is very, very different with accountants and bookkeepers. Is there going to still be a strong dedicated focus on the partner relationships within the Australian marketplace? A simple answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, so I, I, it may be seen that it's being driven out of the UK. The UK are putting programs in place that are going to be run globally and will be run locally within each region. So at the moment, we're putting those, that, that sort of, I guess, the framework into place from the UK, but absolutely will be run locally and regionally. Um, is it where I would like it to be right now? No, I would like to have launched it three or four months ago. Uh, it's taken a bit longer to get these programs running. Um, as an example, we've got our first advisory session for people that have applied to be uh, the Dext advisors. Um, that's been run, I think, uh, the 16th of June. Um, we've got um, uh, another advisory panel that is being put together right now. Um, so that will be a cross section of people from various uh, sizes of firms, whether that be a you know a sole prep bookkeeper through to uh, an, a partner at an accounting firm in a in a top tier, right? Mm -hmm. So all the way through from the different regions, we we want to make sure that we're getting feedback across the wide spectrum of of our our partner base, mm -hmm. and that's been put into place. Hopefully that that will be rolled out uh, in the next month or two as well. Um, We've got some panels that are going on with some talks, which we're getting again. Um, we're, we're, you know, getting a lot more buy-in from uh, the partner base rather than it just being decks talking about products, talking about features, which, you know, which is great. But where we want to be is more talking about uh, the thought leadership around yeah. where, where things are where things are going, how we can help you and how we can all get there together. And I think it's, it's, it's that working together that is going to be the most important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're still aiming to have a, a Dext, um, the Dext exchange or the Receipt Bank exchange in November, which will obviously we hopefully bring in uh, everybody together, which will be uh, fantastic in November. Um, but obviously we'll, we'll be looking to roll out more of those user group type sessions where we'll have more of that feedback. So um, whilst it may seem it's UK, it will absolutely be run within the region and we'll be engaging with people like yourself, Cassandra and Heather and, and, and other, you know, people that have, you know, other communities around them so mm -hmm. that we can make sure that we get that, that uh, you know, not just feedback from those people that are on those panels, but also from the communities that are out there mm -hmm. as well. So you talk about um, particularly that there's, as I understand it, from this conversation, there's actually two levels of advisory panels. One is the this formal advisory panel and network. Uh, and my understanding is that to be involved in that that chairman's lounge panel, as you you sort of qualified it, is that um, somebody will need to be using Dex Prepare and also Dex Pre uh, Precision, uh, as well as having some other metrics about the size of their firm and the number of engaged um, users on the platform or businesses hooked into the platform. Is that going to be a similar criteria for the other advisory panels or are you going to broaden the um, uh, the criteria, I guess, for accessibility to those panels and representation of the industry? 
No, no. So the the the, uh, the Dex advisory uh, program is a different beast to the panels. So the panels is more around the feedback. It's more around um, understanding um, what's happening within the market at, at the ground roots, right? Mm-hmm. So what your bookkeepers and your accountants, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, so that we can we can hear and see that from the you know the horse's mouth, as they say. Um, so that's what the panels are really there for. They're, they're, you know, and user groups are going to be there for. The Dex Advisor is a, is a different program. It's around uh, a sort of, I guess, a win-win situation for those advisors that want to promote themselves as being associated with Dex and for us to be able to, you know, uh, obviously promote them as well. So uh, totally different, but absolutely the panels will be across everybody and anybody that, mm-hmm. that, that we can get in. We can't get in everybody, obviously. Sure, that's but a strategy. It, 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 it's it will be looking at a cross section of those people to make sure that we've got the right feedback uh, and we cover the range of of people and and well sorry the range of partners that we have using our products yeah with the the betas as well um james is the opportunity to participate in those betas being extended to all users at all levels and geographically as well uh because i think one of the challenges that we do often find is that with, with beaters and and I know that again like advisory panels you can't have everybody involved but it's about getting a broad spectrum of user bases both um, from a geographic perspective and a, a practice size perspective is that being taken into account with the beta testing as well yeah so so what we tend to do uh, as most technology companies do is we, we normally do a sort of an alpha test where we'll sort of launch that you know internally but also maybe with you know a handful of partners that have been selected around is it is it something they would use is it is it adding the value that we thought it would um what needs to be changed tweaked uh, etc so We've been through an alpha program. We've now rolled it out into a beta program, which is a wider audience. So that's a, a wider cross section of partners uh, globally. And then once we get that feedback and, it, and it's you know positive, and look, it, it, it's one of those where it's an 80-20 rule. It's never going to be 100%, Great. we understand. And if yeah. we waited till it was 100%, we'd probably be here till next year. So it's going to be one of those where you know, once we get the, the relevant feedback from the beta program and we're happy with it and it's at a percentage of feedback that is positive, then the likelihood is we'll put it into what we call GA, which is generally available. So that's when it's then made available to everybody. And yep. that's that's going to be the program. So it will be GA once we get to a point where we're happy with that feedback and we've tweaked it necessarily to, mm. to, to get that positive feedback. I think it's the old line of don't let... Um perfection get in the way of progress really exactly. is that sometimes exactly. things have got to go out not quite right and that's where you start to do you do start to get the broader feedback from the marketplace um one of the challenges that's been out there in the partner community as well james has been around pricing that's probably the the elephant in the room now <laughs> i'm I've glad been, you uh, smiled then <laughs> I don't know that it's just one elephant in the room. I think it can be a quite crowded room of elephants at times. Um, you know, I've been working with Receipt Bank. We were probably one of the very first or, you know, not very first, but, you know, top 20 bookkeeping practices using Dex way back in 2013, if I dare think. It's mm. scary. Um, and pricing almost since day one has been a challenge. And I know in, in previous iterations of, of staff uh, with uh, Receipt Bank Dex, there were a number of panels involved and a lot of extensive discussions about partner pricing. Um, certainly a number of the challenges have been that you've always had or you did have multiple products in the marketplace. You had the simple uh, extract, you had the streamline and you had the optimize. And then the challenge around that was having different pricing tiers against uh, each of those models. I think it would also be fair to say that um, Dext probably, or Receipt Bank in that stage, took their foot off the pedal and got a little bit complacent in the market, which is where the likes of HubDoc and and some of those other products managed to slip in. And it was only once those those competitors came into the market that um, Dext turned around and went, oh, hang on a sec, we really need to start to catch up. So linked back to pricing again was all of these um, interesting offers that were being made to partners around pricing. So annual pricing would get discounts and then there seemed to be offers made to individual partners come in and sign up and you'll get get this. So the whole pricing structure around Receipt Bank has been an absolute schmozzle. It's resulted in, um, you know, 
water cooler conversations and, and Facebook groups are the new water coolers of, of the day. So people are in there having these conversations about, well, I'm being charged this much for my receipt bank or deck subscription. Well, hang on a sec, I'm being charged twice that. And obviously there's not always the realisation that they're comparing apples and oranges in those, those sorts of discussions. But one of the big things has been the lack of transparency around um, partner pricing. Now, some of the excuses I've heard previously behind that are, we don't want to put that pricing on our website because that would then be public facing and you don't want the business consumers who do do uh, business to, to Dex directly rather than through a partner suddenly starting to ask questions about pricing. My challenge to you is how are you going to fix this? How are you going to make it transparent? And why the heck can't it go behind a firewall? Um, and Orange Select would be the place which seems to have a lot of other Dex um, partner collateral sitting in there. To me, that seems to be the logical place for, for pricing information. Um, I'll dump that one all in your lap for you. And <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you covered a lot, a lot there, and I think there, there's a lot of history there, right? So I think you, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, a lot of the conversations that, you know, uh, yes, we're not on the Facebook groups, but, you know, lots of people copy us in and say, you know, this is going on, this is being said. And sometimes it's not apples for apples. It's, it's it, There's different people compare, comparing different products to each other. We understand that there has been a raft of different pricing that has been out there. Some of them were meant to be discounted for a certain period of time and, and the discounts being carried on. Some of them, you know, were silly discounts and sales guys got away with promising the world. And, and look, I, I think we as a business are aware of the different pricings, you know, and, and, products that are out there we're in a process right now of re trying to realign the products so that extract is no longer available uh, as a product so um Best we now ever. no it's so it's 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 still available to people that are using it but it's not available as a product mm. to be sold so we have optim so we have streamline and we have our opt optimize so that they're, they're the two products um you know new features are coming out all the time i literally had a conversation with the team this morning um and there were like five or six new features that have been released in the last four to five uh weeks and we haven't necessarily shouted about them which is a bit disappointing from my perspective so again we'll be working with marketing to get that that noise out there uh to to the community but certain features will only be put into certain product tiers right because we now want to move people away from the old product that is hard to support is is no longer sustainable as products because they are using different technologies and they're actually built um, with a different team so the optimize and the streamline we need to move everybody onto those so you know people will start to fall behind the times if they're on the older products mm. Um, and we need Which to move still creates the legacy discussions around my products costing me this and somebody else's. Of course. Yeah, so and, it's the whole apples, oranges. Um, and that's the thing. And, and, yeah. and so what we want to do is start to move forward. We, we do have, um, you know, pricing that, um, for example, when you go into the, um, uh, the app on a free trial is that you can take out uh, a five, five bundle uh, client as a partner, so whether you be a bookkeeper or accountant going into our prepare product, you can take out a five bundle priced at $150 for five, right? So that's a fairly uh, transparent pricing. But what you don't get with that is you don't get into our partner program. So that's just a direct model where you have no account manager, you have no onboarding, you have no training other than via video. And that's available online through uh, the solution right now. So what we are looking to do, and, and hopefully we will get there um, uh, fairly soon, is we will have the transparent pricing for the partner program. And obviously the benefits for that partner program, uh, as far as we're, we, we believe, is, is quite considerable because you get free uh, consultancy services built into that. You get free on tra uh, onboard training. We help you onboard your clients as an accountant or bookkeeper. Um, you get the uh, capabilities of being able to talk to your your accountant whether should you have any problems um, with the service or whether you want to look to change the service anyway upgrade downgrade etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and we're looking to make that pricing available fairly fairly soon available that hopefully will make it very transparent 
to the market on where we are and what we where we want to get to, and hopefully we'll remove some of that noise with regards to the legacy products and the the, leg, the leg, sure. legacy pricing that we have. Yeah. My question around that, though, James, is still, if I was a brand new partner making a decision between Dext and some of the other incumbents in the market, is that going onto your website at the moment as a partner, I really have no concept around those sorts of opportunities. So even if you're talking about the, you know, you can sign up now as a trial and get uh, five organisations for $150, that still doesn't translate into a partner arrangement. And most of the bookkeepers and accountants that are sitting in the room, well, I, I would almost say all of the bookkeepers and accountants sitting in the room and all of the bookkeepers and accountants that are considering utilising um, document extraction services want to do it under a partner arrangement because that's what we've, we've been used to, I guess, in the market now with um, SaaS software is working very closely with the vendor to provide a solution to our clients and having a relationship that is very, very transparent. And I'm still not seeing that or understanding how that level of transparency is, is coming out. And in all honesty, you know, the, the conversations I have with users is it, it's usually, yeah, I love Dext. It's probably the better product in the market, but their sales sucks, their pricing sucks. And because of that, I'm actually not going to use it. So that, that's a barrier that I'm still... Um, unclear is, is how you're going to get past it because there is there is a lot of residual and legacy frustration with receipt bank in the market um, and getting clarity around the partner pricing structure and the partner tools is is one of those um, solutions yeah look I think um, you know we, we've got the same problem within the UK as well right because that's the two, our two biggest and longest serving markets um, because of the, I guess, the, the geographical regions that we're in at the moment, we, we've got to make sure that when we put out our pricing that's available to everybody is that it make, to make sure that it, it's, it's the right pricing for all of the regions. Because what we don't want is somebody in the US going, oh, I can get it cheaper in Australia or somebody in the UK going, I can get it cheaper in South Africa, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because that's we're a SaaS solution. To, that's not unique to Dex. Zero have got oh, it the same it, challenge. It's not like all of the other ones. Absolutely. We're not in a position at the moment that we can do that because we don't. We have so many people on the different pricing and the different solutions that we need to be able to move them away. We need to be able to have a migration capability to move them from the old price into the to the new services. You know, hypothetically speaking, somebody's paying a hundred dollars for a hundred clients because they got a ridiculous, stupid deal uh, back in twenty, you know, two thousand and ten. Is how do I move them to a new pricing bundle that could potentially cost them, let's say, a thousand dollars? So I've got to make sure that I've got a migration and I've got a, 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 a solution in place to take that that partner on a journey. Now. In, in Australia alone, we've got about 3,000 partners using us with about 50 odd thousand small, medium businesses. Globally, we've got over a million users. So we've got to make sure that we don't just do a hard stop and we do a hard move and a hard migration because that's, you know, if I go from $100, that instance I just gave as a, as a you know, an indicative from 100 to 1,000, that partner's going to churn, right? They're going to they're going to leave. They're they're going to find that as a ridiculous price. So I've got to make sure that I can, um, or we as a business, we can move them in a way that it's a win-win. Now that means I've got to go through uh, roughly about 1,500 uh, partners to make sure that we've got a program in place to take them on a journey to where we want to get to, to that transparent pricing of what we're going to put on the website. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that for new partners coming on board, we won't have it on the website because we will be looking to put that up there, as I say, shortly. Um, as we bring on new partners, there will always be the, you know, the discounts, the, you know, 30% off for, you know, for the first month or whatever it is that nearly every uh, uh, solution does. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to do some of the silly deals that were done in the past where it was just up to the sales guy to, to make whatever deal they needed to do to get it over the line because that doesn't mm. help him. That doesn't help anybody. James, you'll have to excuse my cynicism, but I've actually been hearing shortly about the pricing, the partner pricing being made available on the website for probably close to two years now. So um, I'm, I'm still yet to find out what the definition of shortly actually is in terms of the, a, a tangible time frame. It's a bit like a TAD or 
you know, how, how long is shortly? Are we talking weeks? Are we talking months? Because I, I, I have seriously been hearing the same conversation for nearly two years. Look, I, 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 it, it would definitely be months. It's not going to be weeks. Um, my, my hope is that we'll be in a position within the Australian region that we'll be able to promote our, our, our web, sorry, our partner pricing. As you say, whether that's on Orange Select or whether that's, you know, uh, or via the website behind a firewall or whether that's even out to the community, uh, that's still to be decided. But we will have, at some stage, we will have that partner pricing that is available that partners can see. Okay. Um, a couple of comments have come through, James, that I'd like to touch on. And one is, um, how is it though that two advisors on the same day asking for the same product get two different prices? Well, I, again, that's, that sometimes can come down to what is the discount that the, the sales guy is giving away at that time. They're, they're allowed to, they're allowed to uh, discount up to a certain, certain value, as any salesperson is. But that's not something that is going to be, sorry, that's not something that is an ongoing discount. It's not like they're, they're going to get uh, a 50% discount for the rest of their term. It might be for the first month. It might be the first two months. Um, we have different discounts at different times. Now, in the case of where it's at, you know, within an hour of each other, that might be the, the, the salesperson was able to, um, to sell to that partner at that time and they agreed on that. That, that discount and the other partner wanted a bit more and negotiated and and the other uh, the other sales rep went okay well I can give you an extra five percent so that, that that's that's typical across any industry and any solution yeah. so uh, that 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 will happen but it's not something that is it's a it's a one-time short-term discount rather than the the historical we'll give it to you for a silly discounted for the rest of your life type conversation mm. we have a standing joke here in the australian um tax agent baz agent community that if you ring the ato and don't like the answer you get you hang up and ring it back again and hope to speak to somebody else um it almost sounds like that that's part of the strategy in, in terms of discussing pricing look i'm really pleased to hear that the, the stupid pricing um is is disappearing i think you know we've seen that previously with some of the other software the accounting solutions that they've come out and offered you know, bulk package discounts, 100 at, you know, a dollar a unit for the life. Um, and then the life is found to only be, you know, 24 months. So I think getting rid of stupid price, stupid pricing is, is probably a smart thing. But it certainly is frustrating and doesn't do anything. And it's just sort of this consistent layering of challenges around pricing that it's like, oh, God, not again. You know, decks are screwing up their pricing again. And it, it does build a level of mistrust within the marketplace. So, um, you know, I don't know how you can start to mitigate that, but that is certainly out there and something that I hear. Um, and it's frustrating because I, I actually think Dext is one of the, the better products in the market in its space and its reputation is, is continually doing its self-damage there. So that I provide that feedback to you as a representative of the, you know, particularly strongly the bookkeeping partner community, but also the partner community in um in general. Uh, somebody else has asked the question, if you buy online, can you cancel online? Because there's a sense at the moment in the comment that's been made is that you need an interview and an introductory letter from the Pope. So again, you know, anecdotally, this isn't actually the first time I've heard these similar sorts of comments that, um, you know, we've had people who have made the decision for whatever reason that they don't want to continue using Dext. Um, and, you know, we, we have to respect that people make those decisions. They could be simply going out of business or downscaling their business or their client mix is changing. And yet it's not a simple process of closing and closing the accounts with Dext. And to a certain extent, in some instances, um, the, the partner has come off the call actually feeling quite aggrieved by the process because they're almost feeling like they're being bullied into continuing with the product and it's actually not an easy um, easy situation for them to cancel whatever's going on. So again, I don't know that there's going to be a simple answer, but I wanted to provide that again as feedback from the community. And perhaps, um, you know, you've made some comments about salespeople that were doing really crazy things. I'm wondering if those salespeople are still within the organisation or, or if they're the people that our advisors are talking to. So, look, I think um, uh, one of our products, uh, Precision, you're able to cancel in-app. Um, so that, that is a capability that's actually in the product. 
Um, I, you can't do that with our prepare. Um, I believe the, the, the techie guys have, have looked at doing that and it's not as simple as anybody would like it to be. Um, the process, uh, you know, the, this model way, if you're in the partner program is, is speak to your account manager and your account manager should deal with that cancellation uh, if that's what you want to do. Obviously, their job as account manager is to try and understand why and is there anything we can do to help you get more benefit out of using our, our platform. So whilst I don't want them to just roll over, I do want them to ask a question of, of the partner that is looking to leave, but it shouldn't become onerous that somebody feels aggrieved when they leave a phone call, right? Mm. We have had um, a bit of a turnover in staff recently, so I'm sure that's gonna be another question that's gonna come up at some stage. Um, we have had a, 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 a bit of change in the number of staff and, and some of that's by design. And some of that has been uh, organic. So by that, we, we as a business are bringing on new products, bringing on new services, and we need to have more robust conversations. We need to have some more intelligent conversations with bookkeeper and accountants rather than just having uh, salespeople that can give away a discount and can, you know, you can sell anything. You know, if you give away the right discount, you know, up to 99% discount to, to anybody, they will almost buy it, right? Which is historically what we've had before. So uh, the old guard is gone. Uh, we've had a new CEO come in a couple of years ago now, Adrian, that's helped um, bring on some different financing into the business. So we've had some uh, different investors and now had a, a, a obviously a, a major buyout now uh, early this year. We've got a new chief revenue officer by the name of Alistair Newman, who's, um, who's in the UK, that's um, building out his general management team. So um, I think four of the five uh, GMs are, are fairly new within the last 12 months. So that can sort of tell you where, where the business is, is looking to go. We, we're looking to more into a more sustainable, scalable business so that we can provide the level of you know, competence in regards to our sales staff and account management that, that you, our partners, deserve, but also make sure that we can have conversations around new products and services that we're going to be bringing into market so that we can understand and make sure that they are actually, you know, hit the mark in regards to what you're offering your clients. Mm. James, somebody's come back with a comment. Um, concerned that Dex perhaps doesn't want the smaller bookkeepers in the market as partners. Um, that, that's the sense they've been, been getting. Um, and, you know, the comment is saying dismissing a five client package is something that won't be supported by account managers any longer. And again, I wonder if this is the differences sometimes between the Australian marketplace and the UK marketplace. So, you know, the UK has got a very unregulated bookkeeping industry and they're very, very tightly aligned with accounting practices. Whereas in Australia, we've got um, all of the accounting practices that are doing their work. But then we've got the BAS agent um, and bookkeeping practices. And there's a large number of those. We're a very professionalised industry. Um, you know, we, we're, we're tightly regulated through the Tax Practitioners Board. Um, and there are a lot of sole operators and whether that's somebody that's, you know, doing 15 to 20 hours a week or somebody that's got a multi-seat um, practice, um, there is a strong presence of bookkeeping businesses within the Australian market and some of them are very, very small, but they're still significant contributors to the Dext um, Channel 2 market. Um, how would you comment around that? I guess, um, look, as, as a business, as we look globally, we, we, we're not a profitable business right now. We've been going for 10 years to 11 years now. And we're not a profitable business and we need to get to profitability. And, and that's been some of the changes that have been brought into, whether it be through the management structure, the financing, through pricing or where, where we're going and what we need to get to. Um, where we find that there, there's a, there, there is definitely a, uh, a sweet spot right now globally where 10 clients to have an account manager and to that obviously costs us as a business a significant amount of money and to have that onboarding which is done via a, a person and have that continuing support from that person as well uh, we call them our, our, our um, uh, PSCs so there are practice solution consultants that are available to, for consultancy services ongoing. They have a cost 
And the sweet spot globally for us is um, is 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 that 10, 10 spot. So that's not to say that we won't ever look at the five, but right now as a business, we you know we need to look at where we're going from a trajectory as a as a as a profitable business, where we need to get to and how we need to get there pretty quick, so that we don't have to keep going back and getting financing because mm. if you start going and have to get get back financing, eventually somebody's going to ask for their money back, <laughs> as you all know. <laughs> um, so we've got to make sure that you know we, we're 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 we don't want to take the quickest route because it's not about just being profitable. It's about how we can do it with the least minimal impact to our partner base. Sure. And, and that so, takes time. Yeah. I'd like to take a bit of a segue from that, actually, but I think it's got a direct link to profitability. Is Where do you see the concept of the invoicing sitting in the market and, and what do you think the impact will be on the products such as Dext as well? Great question, and, and it's, it's one that we're looking at right now. Um, without giving too much away, it, it's very much on our on our uh, forefront of mind. So um, it, it's something that we're investigating. You know, if I take the different regions that we play in, France, uh, very much uh, rolling out e-invoicing as, as a country right now. Uh, the UK with their Make Tax Digital are also, you know, same as, uh, as Australia with any, anybody who deals with the government uh, agencies have to be, you know, use invo- e-invoicing. Mm. So they're the types of things that we're looking at right now. And the only thing I can say is, is watch this space as we as we work closer with uh, the types of agencies and, and panels that deal with those types of things on where we're going forward. Because mm. um, we have to be, you know, we have to be looking at what that, is that going to do to our current business? Is that going to mm. eat into... Uh, you know, part of our product, or is that something that we need to build into and, and extend to augment and and, um, uh, and and create a capability within our platform? Mm. It, leveraging off of that, are you able to give us some insights on what some of the additional product lines are that Dex is um, heading towards? So, look, I, I think when we launched Dex, um, for those that were able to attend the presentation by our CEO, um, there were five products on the on the suite. Um, I think you know. The, Roadmaps are always subject to change because you know things come in, things pop up like uh, uh, COVID for, is an example. Um, you know nobody saw that coming. E-invoicing is now becoming very um, prevalent in the market. But when we launched it, we talked about five uh, products. One of them obviously was Prepare, the old receipt bank. Uh, one of them was Precision, the old saviour. Uh, another one is Pay. Dext pay about how um, invoices can be paid from a central solution within the Dex platform. Another one was called productivity. So that was more around sort of workflow um, and managing processes of information. So you can sort of see the P solution go in there, prepare, precision, pay, uh, productivity. Um, and the final one, um, which I think should be called performance, uh, is around insights. Um, so it's around more around looking into that from an advisory perspective around what are the types of uh, information that an advisor would like to see from the data, whether that be from all, all types of inputs of data, whether that be just from the GL, whether that be from uh, other sources, so that they can offer the best advisory services to their, to their client base. So they're just the five that uh, sort of front of mind. But as I say, that's all subject to change. Things crop up, things change. Um, but they're the ones that we're sort of working on from a, a, a product management perspective right now. Mm, okay. Um, I've had an interesting question come up and it says, does Dext have a strong view over the ownership of the data stored within Dext? Uh, does the data and the IP belong to the partner or end client? And I actually know where this question is, what the genesis of this question is, because a lot of it relates back to accounting products where the subscriber of the product is legally the owner of the data that's held within the product rather than the client who the data is being prepared for and on behalf of. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a position that Dext has on there. And I'll, I'll caveat that by saying, but I, I know most of the documentation that gets uploaded to Dext in theory does move out of Dext into um, a, a secondary system, be it um, Zero or, or um, Intuit or any of the other systems. Um, but is, is there any comment around that? Look, I, 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 w- I wouldn't like to give Dex view on that without uh, uh, consulting various people. But yep. I, I think what Dex does is that 
we leave that up to the partner and the, and the client to resolve that issue because at the end of the day, we just use the data and then pass that data back. Um, so we're not an owner of the data in any shape or form. It's then up to the partner and the client it's, to resolve it's a that. Flow through, yeah. Okay. Um, another question, any plans to make it easier to transfer client subscriptions between advisors and to stop subscriptions? And I'll, I'll agree, that's been one of um, my frustrations is if, you know, I've inherited a client off of another advisor or one of my clients is left to go. It is a, you know, it's a pain in the bum to have to yeah. email somebody and ask for the transfer. Is that on the radar at all as being improved and streamlined? It, it is absolutely so. Um, there's, there's there's been various conversations around how that would work. Um, we even went into an alpha test on that at one stage, and the feedback was this is worse than the manual process. Um, so we went back to the drawing board on that. So absolutely, it's something that we're, we've we're looking into and have looked into. Uh, it's not on the the current roadmap right now for delivery in the next two to three months. I think it's because it's a bigger piece of work than we had anticipated, but absolutely is what we're looking at. Uh, one of the features that we just, I do, do want to just mention because it's been asked by uh, numerous times is adding uh, descriptions to items in emails. That has just been released in a beta release as well. That is due to come out uh, very shortly so that you can take descriptions from inside an email and that will be um, put into the, into, the, into the system as well. Okay. Question that's come up, and I have to admit, I, I, you know, when you were talking earlier, I'm sort of writing some dot points down, and um, one of the things that I wrote down was stick to knitting. Um, and the question that's come up, is it possible that decks are trying to do and be too much the more you spread the thinner the other services get? Um, so far, I'm hearing Dex wants to do it all, which usually means the thing that you used to be the best for starts to, stuff, to suffer. So is, you know... We would often say that uh, about some of the other accounting products in the market. Should you just stick to your knitting or, um, you know, is there a strong case for diversification and appreciating that e-invoicing is, is going to be a significant impactor to, you know, data extraction type services? What would your response be to that? I think as a business, we want to champion the bookkeeper and accountants. Um, and I think if we just stayed in that one niche market, um, and there's multiple entrants coming into that market all the time. I think, yes, we could stay ahead of the curve, but there will always be other players uh, and competitors. Now, we welcome those in, in market because what it does is it makes us want to be ahead of them. We have to be to be, um, to be relevant, right? But if we just stayed as a one niche product, um, you, you, you're sort of putting all your eggs in one basket, right? We want to make sure that we're championing the accountants and the bookkeepers, and we want to make sure that we're working with them to move forward as, as an industry to supply the best service that, that, that can be delivered to the end clients, right, to the end businesses. So we, we don't want to be everything to everybody. That's that's not where we want to be. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we're, we're helping bookkeepers and accountants move with the times and it, it, where we can even have one eye on to the future so that we can help define that where necessary and help advi and help uh, bookkeepers move into that advisory service we absolutely are investing into receipt bank we you know sorry into prepare to us that's a ten dollars in the in the kitty jar um into prepare it, we we still want to be uh, seen as the best um, receipt capture and invoice capturing uh, solution in the market. So, you know, we've got a significant amount of investment going into that product so that we are, uh, we believe we are. And there are always entrants and new entrants coming into the market that we need to be make sure that we're aware of. We need to understand what they're doing. We need to understand what they're, what features and functions they're putting in. And so we, 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 you know, absolutely will be developing and including uh, services uh, into that, that that product, as well as bringing on you. And that's part of the investment, right? So we've taken 55 million pounds, right? Put that into dollars. That's a significant amount of money so that we can develop into other products as well. Um, if we took all of that investment and just plowed that into Receipt Bank, would we get our money? How long would it take it to get our money back? Um, I think that would be a, a question an investor would, would you know, immediately ask us. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's on us as a business to make sure that we're adding other services and capabilities that bookkeepers and accountants want. Mm. 
James, look, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate there's been some curly questions thrown at you. I, I hope that one of the things that you, you, you know, we're keen to inform our um, our partner base about where Dext is and where it's at, but also to get some of the the more challenging questions around uh, pricing, particularly answered, and the relationship between Dext and the the partner market. Thank you very much for taking those questions um, and the candour with which you, you've answered them. It's been really, really appreciated. I'm sure, um, you know, unfortunately, these sorts of things are still going to be an issue out there, but we look forward to seeing what Dext plans to do, you know, moving forward to mitigate these and continue to re-engage with the Australian, you know, bookkeeping and accounting marketplace. So from my perspective, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, I'll just jump in and say thank you very much, Cassandra, for uh, co-hosting this and um, um, leading the, the, the questions there. I really appreciate your advocacy for the community. And, James, look, we're deeply appreciative that, that you joined us. We're very passionate about the solution and we really appreciate that you came and, as Cassandra said, uh, answered um, um, a number of those questions. Um, I was wondering whether um, you had any final words and if you'd like to um, suggest how people should get in contact with um, Dext if they wish to after this session. No, I, I just want to say thank you very much. And just from a wrap up perspective is that we, we are changing as a business. We've got a new management team and structure in place now. Uh, we want to be more open and transparent with where we're going and our pricing um, uh, is one of the things that I'm uh, absolutely an advocate for. Um, we want to be seen as a, uh, making the accountant and the bookkeeper the champion. Uh, and that's where we want to be. So there will be some other changes that will be coming down in the way that we, we sort of uh, deliver our solutions. So watch this space. Regards to, to feedback, um, I'd love to get feedback through um, uh, either yourself, Heather or Cassandra, but also through the account managers that the, the partners have, right? Uh, that they are the the channel where the best information gets gets channeled into the into the right business um, it's not through the support channel it's definitely through their account manager they, that's where you know the account manager can talk to them about the solutions can talk to them about the capabilities but also new features that are made available that may not necessarily be known so um, if they want to reach out to their account managers they should all know who they are if they don't uh, then please reach out to to myself um, I've got a very very easy email address it's james.parker at receiptbank.com very good. Thank you so much, James. Really appreciate it. And hopefully everyone um, knows who their account manager is or is going to uh, communicate and contact you to find out who that is. But really appreciate you. And I know that you have a, a bit of a, a, a lurgy at the moment. So thanks for, yes. for, <laughs> Thank for, you. for really just, sticking at it for the last <laughs> hour. James, is that james.parker at receiptbank.com or dex.com? Uh, dex.com, dex sorry, dex.com. <laughs> That's $20, $20 in the jar already. How much is in that kitty jar? Maybe you should come oh. up and have a drink with Cass and I with that kitty jar. I blame yeah. the cold and flu tablets. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. We're deeply appreciative. Appreciate it. Thank you to everyone in the Orange team who also helped out in coordinating this event. And thank you to all the attendees who um, joined us um, during the session and uh, are watching it online. Really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank